Hi, it's Sandra from Sandra D Imagery, and I'm going to share the thought process, the conceptual storytelling, and the techniques behind this image. It started with a little girl that I had sitting in my stash, and I wanted to use her in a piece of art, and I wasn't too sure how I was going to work with her. My original idea was to have her standing in a field of wheat and I was going to add a little house on the horizon. And I tried that, but it just didn't work for me. It wasn't telling a story, even though I never had a vision in my mind. And so sometimes when that happens, when I'm creating and it's just not working with me, I let my imagination roam and let it go wherever it wants. It doesn't have to be about reality. It's about sparking ideas. What I did was go to my secret stash with all my elements, backgrounds, textures and scroll through, looking to see if I could find an idea or inspiration. And I stumbled across these wings and I'd forgotten about them and I thought, oh, I could actually work with this. I'm going to put the wings on the little girl. Over to Photoshop, I placed the wings, did a little bit of tweaking. I also put a house in the horizon, but again, that wasn't working. So what I did was go back to my stash and start scrolling through again to see if I could find any other elements that would give me an idea and an inspiration. And I came across the key and the frame. And I thought, oh, I can work with this. Even though I didn't have an idea, I thought, let's experiment. What I did was place the frame and then the key and I thought, this actually works. And all of a sudden, my imagination thought, this is about unlocking a secret or a place to another world. But then as I let my imagination roam, the idea came to me that this actually could tell a story about a young girl transitioning into young womanhood. And that's what the frame and the key represents, is it's about being unlocked. She's frightened about leaving her childhood, but she's also looking forward to the journey of becoming a young woman. And this is what conceptual storytelling is about. Having an idea, putting elements in that may be symbolic, and that's what the frame and the key are, the symbolic. The birds I added later, and I'll explain why I added the birds. As I break down the layers and the techniques that I use, you don't see all the elements and the ideas that I had as I was processing this. As I mentioned before, I placed a house, I even put a tree in, I put a, a little animal in, and I decided it was just too busy. The story lies with the girl and the symbolic composition of the frame and the key. And then once that was in place, then I worked on the colour grading to give that mood. Let's dive in and I'll share with you the story of the little girl and how I created her. For the first part, let's have a look how I built the layers up to create this image. I started with this base background, then comes the foreground, the wings, the little girl, the frame, and as I add the different elements, when I've got to that stage, now it's all about colour grading. And as I'm just building it up, I will explain the different techniques that I've used, and this is the finished image. Now let's go in and have a look at the different layers and techniques that I used. I started with this as the base image. In my vision, I originally had her standing in a field of wheat, which needed a sky. And that is why I've started with this sky texture. It's one of my own photos that I've done some texturizing on with 
different brushes to give it that textured look and also to because I felt that it matched or tonally matched in with the colour of her dress. Next was one of my own photos and it's of a wheat field. Now I remember when I was trying to position this I was struggling with getting the gradient to look smooth from sky into that foreground and you can see over on the layer stack I've actually done some masking just to tone it down and when I say masking I used a combination of techniques of a gradient a little bit of brushwork to get rid of some of the the stronger points in that foreground next I got the wings in the layer stack and when I was creating this I tried her first and then I tried the rings and then I mixed it up just to see how it would work. So what I've done is place the wings first where I think it sits in the composition. Then I've added the little girl. And I didn't want the wings too high and that's why I placed the wings first because I thought it would be easier to align the little girl with the wings as opposed to me trying to juggle with the wings and their positioning. What I've done over here to totally match the little girl in with the foreground and background is used a neural filter and one of the ways that I'll do that is just go up to filter and then I'll go to neural and then I'll choose harmonization and I let Photoshop do what I call the grunt work. If it does a good job of color matching for me in harmonization technique, I'll run with it. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. Once I had the little girl and the wings and the background in place, I was struggling. What am I going to add to this? Do I need to add anything? And that's when I go over to my creative stash and scroll through and look for the different elements that I have that I've collected over the years. And sometimes it sparks an idea or gives me inspiration. And as I was scrolling through, I came up with this next element. I'll turn that layer on and it's a frame. Now, why did I choose the frame? I really don't know. I didn't have a vision or an idea. I thought, I'm gonna experiment and play. And again, it comes down, letting your imagination roam and not be frightened to try something different. Then I thought, oh, what else can I do with this? Let's go back to the stash and have a look. And as I was scrolling, I came across this element. And I'll turn the layer on and it's the key. And I thought, oh, I wonder. So I placed the key in and then it was starting to, to gel a little bit of a story for me. And I thought, is this key unlocking a doorway to somewhere? Is it unlocking a feeling inside? It's about letting the imagination roam, coming up with different ideas. Sometimes the ideas are fantastic. Sometimes they just don't work. But this time it did. And I thought, I've got the frame and the key. Now what else can I put into this? I tried again different elements. I tried butterflies. I tried dragonflies. I, you know, tried, what was it, a little heart in there. But I came across these birds and I'll turn the layer on and I actually duplicated the bird and put them in. And what I've done is formed what I call a compositional triangle, the key and the two birds. Now, what do the two birds represent? Was It was the flight, the feelings of escaping with inside of the little girl transitioning. And these thoughts are just rattling through the back of my mind as I'm creating. I find when I'm processing an image or being creative, I block out everything else that's around me and I just concentrate on what I'm creating. Sometimes I have the ideas, sometimes I don't, and this was one of them. Once I've got the birds together, I sat back and I looked and I thought, I don't need anything else. 
This just tells the story. It tells the story with the key, the frame and the birds and the wings and the little girl. The choice of the background was through no vision. It was just, I thought I'll put those two elements together to create a background. Now it's all about colour grading. And I use colour to tell a story, a mood, an atmosphere. I sat back and I looked and I thought the little girl looked sombre. The colours are very cool with a touch of warmth in there, but predominantly cool. What emotions do cool colours bring? And this is where I decided now to work on my colour grading techniques. Like anything in Photoshop, there's so many different ways that you can do things to get different looks. And this is what I came up with to get the colour grading as the base layer for my colour. And what I chose on this one was a colour lookup. I'll turn the layer on. You can see it's a colour lookup. I'll turn that on. And you can see now it's really dialed down those colours. Going to open up the properties and have a look. And the actual colour lookup that I used for this was Foggy Night. And it's probably one of my favourites if I want something a little bit moody. These are included with Photoshop. You can actually create your own. You can buy them. These are just your standard ones. So I chose Foggy Night. And let's have a look at the blend mode and the opacity. I'll come up to the blend mode and I chose Darken. And the opacity is at 37. Now if I change that back to normal and I put the opacity back up to 100%, that gives a real monochromatic look. And it does work. But I wanted that blue to come through because that's why I chose this little girl. I love the blue and the detail in the dress. So what I'm going to do is go back to the opacity and the blend mode, 37% and darken. There's no formula when you're working on a colour lookup. It's basically about just playing. And I'll just point again where you can get your colour lookup. My next layer is the stamp visible layer and I'll just turn it on. The reason that I do a stamp visible layer is basically it's like a stop or a block for me to go stop and look at the image. Is there anything else that you could add, do, get rid of distractors? It's about going look at it with fresh eyes again before you continue on with your workflow. One of the techniques that have been left over from my landscape photography days when I learnt this technique and I still incorporate it into my creative work. You don't have to, but it's just my way of going. Stop now, have a look, reassess. Now when I've looked at the image, I thought it's, it's a little bit flat. What could I do with the colour grading? My next layer is the curves layer and I'll turn that layer on and off. And the curves technique that I've used, I'll open up the properties, is I'll hold down my Alt key or Option key if you're on a Mac and click on Auto. What that does is it opens up another dialog box and you've got some choices. Enhance brightness and contrast and dark and light. And you can see some of the changes are quite dramatic, others are just very subtle. But for this, I wanted to enhance brightness and contrast, and that was the one that I played with. I'll click on OK and close the properties box down. I'll turn that layer off and on. It's a subtle shift in the colour toning. Now, the next layer is the hue and saturation, and I'll quite often desaturate my colours and then build up the colours again to get that colour depth. I'll turn that layer on and let's have a look at what the properties are on the hue and saturation. No formula, it's just about playing or dialing with the saturation and the lightness. So you can see minus 18, I've dialed it down on the saturation, minus two on the lightness. Sometimes I'll come in and I'll go to presets and I'll go, well, let me look at what old style is 
Now, old style can work as a preset, but I didn't want that, so I've gone with what I wanted before. Just undo that and get it back to where I wanted it. The next layer is what I call the average technique or colour average. And this colour that's sitting here is not what I've chosen. I again let Photoshop do the grunt work. It's like throwing over a colour wash over your image to tonally blend in your elements and see if it can just tie everything together. The technique to do that is go to Filter, Blur, Average. Now once you click on Average, Photoshop does the grunt work, works out what the average colour is and it comes up with this layer. Turn it off and on, it's very subtle, but it just sometimes can give it a real depth of colour. Now what I've done on the next layer is I felt that this colour was playing with the tones on her face. So I've done a stamp visible layer. I've also added a mask and I've brushed off that colour average underneath. Turn the layer on and off. Let's have a look at the opacity. I've dialed it right down to 58%. No blend mode, but just put it to 58%. If I go up to 100%, it's quite dark, so I didn't want that. I'll undo, get it back to the 58%. I'm now at the finish line. I'm happy with the colouring. I'm happy with the elements and the story that it's telling. But what I'll do now is to give it a bit more of a, a vintage old camera look is add some film grain. And the technique that I used was through Nick Software. It's a plugin and I've chosen film grain and it's under color effects. So I'll turn that layer off and on. Now let's have a look at the opacity. 37%. I dial that up to 100%. You can actually see it's monochromatic, darker, it didn't work for me. For someone else, they might go, that's exactly what I'm looking for. We all view colours, our thought processes through different lenses. There's no right or wrong. I'll just undo that and put it at 37%. Now, I could continue with this image. I could put a little bit more light into the foreground. But what I'm thinking in my mind now is I'm at the finish line. I'm actually thinking this would be a good image to portray in a square format. Now, when I finish this image, I'll save it as a PSD or you could save it as a TIFF. Doesn't matter. For me, it's a personal choice PSD. Then I'll save it as a JPEG, full size JPEG. Then I will do my cropping. So if I wanted to crop this, I would work on a square format. And I'll just do that as a square format so you can actually see how it changes the composition. And now it really, what I call, tightens the story. She's in the centre. I don't need all that foreground that's hanging out to the side because she is the heroine. And that's the story of my little girl, how I created her, the vision that I didn't have at the beginning to what I had at the end. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them into the comments section. Have fun being creative.